أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Full Structure Model Analysis Using AMOS IBM SPSS AMOS Series In the previous lectures, we did a simple structural model whereby we had one IV and one DV and then we did a path analysis or a structural model with composite variables. In this case or in full structural model analysis, what happens is that a full structural model assesses the relationship between constructs but also includes the measurement indicators for each variable. So your constructs are not your composite variable or you haven't transformed your constructs into a composite variable. So you have all the indicators for your constructs in your full structural model analysis. A full structural model will allow you to account for the measurement error in a construct's indicators while also assessing the relationship between constructs. Since you've got your indicators, so each construct with its indicator will have error term. You will initially draw all the constructs and indicators similarly as you did in your CFA. Then you will start including the direct paths between the constructs. So the process is similar as we did in our CFA. We will add the construct with its indicators. But there we drew covariances between the constructs. Here we will add direct paths, single headed arrow. Now this is a more robust model and will account for each indicator individually. Unlike a composite variable that is what we did in path analysis, each indicator of a construct is included along with its effect on other constructs. Now here is an example. This is your construct, these are your indicators and these are your error terms. So this is your full structural model with all the constructs and their items along with the error terms. And you see, there are arrows heading from these exogenous independent variable to this endogenous variable. Now here, this variable becomes exogenous and these variables are endogenous. So what you are doing is you are looking at the impact of one variable on the other. Now look at this here. These two variables, the two independent variables or constructs, they are covariant. So if you've got independent variables, you can or you should covary them if they are not in other way linked with each other. Moving on. So this is our proposed model that we are going to check in this particular study or this particular session. So just like path model, you need to include error terms for each dependent construct and to make sure all error terms are labeled. In the CFA, all constructs were considered independent constructs, but that is not the case in full structural model. In CFA, all the constructs were covariant. So the independent constructs as done here in this example, they are covariant. But in full structural model, these variables are endogenous variable that's why they are not covariant rather we are looking at the impact of one variable on the other these are two independent variables that's the reason they are covariant a construct is considered an independent if it has structural relationship that influences an other construct and is not being influenced by any other construct in the model so your construct is independent only if it influences another variable and is not being influenced by any other variable, then it's truly independent. So if you've got more than one independent variable that fits this definition, they will be covariant with each other. So in this example, we've got two independent variables, authentic leadership and ethical leadership. These are truly independent variables. Since these two constructs are considered independent, a covariance needs to be added between them. We are going to practically draw the model. Now after adding these structural relationship and labeling all error terms, you are ready to run the analysis. 
Now, how do you make this model in Amos? Let's have a look at the model. Before we go on and analyze the output, let's draw our model. Now, here is the model. Look at this. These are three variables considered independent, and that's why we have covalent them. But in a structural model, now we are going to transform this measurement model into a structural model. How do we do this? How do we transform a measurement model like this into a structural model? In this case, I've got this authentic leadership, ethical leadership, and life satisfaction. Now, these two are my independent variables. This one here and this one here is my independent variable. And this one here is my dependent variable. Now, moving on. So the first step is let's remove these covariances. Now these are removed. I need a bigger canvas. So what I'll do is I'll go to view interface properties. And from here, I'm going to select landscape or rather we can increase it landscape legal. Let's view larger area of the path diagram. Now here it is. We can do it shorter. Okay, this is fine. Next step. Now this is my dependent variable. So I'm going to move it. Let's move it. But look at this. I can't move it. Reason being, I haven't preserved the symmetries. So click here. Make sure both are selected like your truck icon to move the object and preserve symmetry so that you can move the whole model. Now here is my whole model moved. Now I want these indicators on the right. So I'll click here and then come here and click here. Now it's on the right. Now, how do I link these variables? What you need to do is draw a path because I'm looking at the impact of authentic leadership and behaving ethically on life satisfaction. Now, as I mentioned earlier that this is your dependent variable. Now, this needs to have an error term for the remaining variance, something that is left behind. So this is your error term. Now, these are your two independent variables because they are not being influenced by anyone else or any other variable. So you need to covary these variables as well. So click draw covariances and then you just drag from one to another. Let's touch up. Click here, click here, click here, click here. Now this looks fine. So let's move constructs with the model. Let's move it here. We can move this here. So when moving error terms, make sure you have preserved the symmetries. Let's move the error terms for this particular construct and this particular construct. Now we need to name this error term. So we go to plugins, name unobserved variables. Now we are ready to run the model. So we go to calculate estimates. And yes, your model did run fine. So Let's see the output. If you go to the output here, let's look at this. Well, this is bound to be significant because obviously we've got a higher sample size. But in this case, we are looking at the impact of the variables. We are rather interested in the impact of authentic leadership and ethical behavior on life satisfaction. So let's analyze the output. So here is our output for the model. Now here are your regression weights. Here are your standardized regression weight. Now this is a full structural model. Now since it's a structural model, I'm interested in assessing the relationship between variables rather than the relationship of the indicators with their latent variable. So this is what I'm interested in. Assessing the impact of authentic leadership on life satisfaction assessing the impact of behaving ethically on life satisfaction or ethical behavior or ethical leadership on life satisfaction. Now look at this here, the P value. Well, this is insignificant. Look at the critical ratio. That is your T value. This is insignificant, less than 1.96. This is greater than 0.05. Now your hypothesis is accepted. If you've got your critical ratio or T value greater than 1.96 and your P value less than 0.05. In this case, we can say authentic leadership does not have any impact on life satisfaction, whereas ethical behavior does influence the life satisfaction of the employees. So what you do is after running the analysis, we go to the output. In the estimates tab, you see your results, but these are unstandardized estimates. 
here are your standardized estimates that we report along with your critical ratio and p value moving on your r square so where is your r square let's look at the model here now let's go to the output we do not see any r square here so what we need to do is we need to go to analysis properties output squared multiple correlation but this is already checked so why aren't we looking at the squared multiple correlation the reason being we have to go to standardized estimates now only we will see the standardized estimate 0.37 is your squared multiple correlation that is your r square so where is it go to estimates and here it is here it is squared multiple correlation look at this lst life satisfaction it's 0.366 which is actually changed to 0.37 so 37 percent change in life satisfaction can be accounted to authentic leadership and ethical behavior let's look at the model fits so in order to assess the model fit what you need to do is simply go to the view text model fit and here is your model fit less than three very good approaching nine gfi greater than nine cfi tli tli approaching 5.95 cfi over 0.95 your rmsca less than 0 0.08 so overall we can say the model has a good fit to check standardized RMR, go to plugins, standard, standardized RMR. You can rerun your model and you will see standardized RMR, less than 0 0.05. This is good. So overall, you can say your model is a good fit. So how do you report the results of your structural model? So I've got a template here. What you can do is you can start with a heading called structural model assessment or analysis. So this is how we present our output from our structural model. A structural equation model is generated through a MOS, was used to test the relationship. So what you did was you generated a model in a MOS to test the relationship. Now, before we present our results for relationship or hypothesis, we need to explain the model fit. So your model is accepted if your C-min is less than five, your GFI indices the tucker and lewis index the confirmatory fit index these are greater than 0 0.90 however in addition to this our model will be a good fit if we've got srmr less than 0 0.05 and the root mean square of approximation rmsea between 0 0.05 to 0 0.08 rather it should be less than 0 0.08 but it's preferred that it is less than 0 0.05 the fit indices for the model shown in table 1 fell between the acceptable range now here we write our fit indices so where are our fit indices so what we need to do is just go to the output go to the model fit here so what is your chi square divided by degrees of freedom 2.626 so what we'll do is we simply write here 2.626 so what is your GFI? Let's write our GFI here. GFI is 0.915 and this is 0 0.958, 0 0.948, 0 0.915. TLI is 0.948. Your CFI is 0.958, your SRMR was 0 0.04, 0 0.04, and your RMSCA was 0 0.06. Now that you have reported your model fit, the next step is you write your square multiple correlation, which was 0, 0 0.37 for life satisfaction. Now this means that 37% variance in life satisfaction is accounted by authentic leadership i'm just writing the short form now and ethical leadership once you have done these two steps the next step is reporting or writing your hypothesis results 
Now, the study assessed the impact of authentic and ethical leadership on life satisfaction. The impact of authentic leadership on life satisfaction was positive and significant. Was it? No, it was positive, but it was insignificant. Look at this here. Look at the results. Go to estimates and look at this here. Although it is positive, look at this standardized. Yes, it's positive, but it is insignificant. So what we do is, it was 0 0.019. Your t-value was 0 0.161. And the p-value was, since it's greater than 0 0.05, so we just need to write the p-value here. And this was 0.872. Hence, H1 was not supported. Similarly, you can do for ethical leadership on life satisfaction. It wasn't self-efficacy. But this was positive and significant. How come I say that it is positive and significant? Look at this here. The estimate is 0.657. The standardized is 0.589. So let's put 0.589. The T value was 4.834. And the p-value was less than 0 0.001, which is, since it's three statics, this means 0, 0, 0, which is less than 0 0.001. So hence, H2 was supported. Now, let me correct this. Now, here, what you can do is you can put your hypothesis results. Authentic leadership effect on life satisfaction. And similarly, ethical leadership and its effect on life satisfaction. You can write your standardized estimates, T values, P values, and your decision here. Similarly, mention your model fit here, and similarly, mention your R square here. So this is how you transform a measurement model into a structural model. And then you run the model and assess its output, and this is how you can report the output. I hope the video would have helped you understand a full structural model analysis. Thank you very much.